Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post note tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am going to be doing my nails, as you can tell. I am starting off by prepping my natural nail. I did go ahead and soak off my last set of nails. Reason why I did so is I get so aggravated with the tip underneath the nail. I prefer to have zero growth of my natural nail underneath. So I went ahead and soaked them off so I can start fresh and do something fun. So I am using my mandrel bit with a sanding band. These are both from Profiles Backstage. I am using their purple sanding bands in the medium grit. Along with that, I'm using my e-file from Kiara Sky. This is their rechargeable unicorn e-file. And I have her at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. That's my comfortable speed for all of my prep. So I'm just carefully going in on my natural nail and buffing off the shine. And then we're gonna be moving on to some cuticle prep. Now for a little bit more of in-depth prep, I like to use a needle bit. This one is actually from Profiles Backstage. I am obsessed with needle bits and everything that has to do with cleaning up that cuticle area. It just makes a set look so much nicer. So I'm using this going around that cuticle area and this is basically gonna get into those hard to reach areas where your mandrel bit will not reach. And I'm telling you, this has been a huge game changer ever since I started implementing this in my prep. I have very minimal lifting when it comes to the product adhesion. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that on both hands and then we're gonna be buffing off the cuticle. Now taking my cuticle ball bit, I have now moved my speed up to 5,000 RPMs and I'm just going in very gently around that cuticle area, lightly buffing off any dead cuticle without having to nip or trim anything off. Now if you have a little bit more of a stubborn cuticle, go ahead and up the speed very slowly and make sure you are being very light when it comes to this process. It is very safe to use on the skin, obviously. However, of course, if you have it at a very high speed and you're using very harsh pressure, that can cause a little bit of discomfort. So you wanna make sure you are being extra careful when working on yourself or your clients.
Now for today's video, we are changing it up a little bit. I am using the flawless tips from Profiles Backstage. I've been waiting for them to drop some tips. And these are full sculpted, pre-shaped in the coffin shape. The length is so perfect. So I'm so excited to be using these. I'm gonna go ahead and apply them on all of my nails using the Young Nails Brush on Glue. It is my favorite glue. It dries very quickly, which makes for a quicker process. So I'm just adding a little bit of that on to the tip and then firmly pressing that into my natural nail, holding it until it is dry. And I absolutely love these tips. I feel like they're gonna be a very big hit. So definitely recommend them if you guys are looking for some coffin shaped tips. I'm taking my e-file with my mandrel bit and sanding band once again, speed of 4,000 RPMs, and I'm just very, very quickly and gently buffing that tip to blend it right into my natural nail. This isn't absolutely necessary. They do apply nice and flush. I don't personally do this all the time. It's just kind of what I'm feeling in the moment. So I figured I would go ahead and do that. Now I'm taking Kiara Sky Lint Free Wipes and some Young Nail Swipe. I'm just quickly cleaning the surface of my nail. This is gonna help remove any excess dust while also dehydrating the natural nail, which is a very good thing to implement when it comes to your prep. I'm taking Triple X Bond from Not Polish and I'm just quickly priming my nails. This is gonna help the acrylic adhere to your natural nail. I do like to do two coats just to make sure that I get zero lifting. So I'm gonna go ahead and really scrub that into my natural nail, repeat that on all 10 fingers, and then I go back in with a second coat on all 10 fingers. Now for our acrylic application, I am using the Not Polish Acrylic Brush in a size 12. Along with that, I'm using their monomer as well. Now for our acrylic, I decided to do something other than nude, but still neutral. So we are using Spring Latte at the tip. This is such a pretty color and I am so upset that I haven't used it before. It's a really pretty muted grayish purple with some pink tones in there, but I love it. It's such a pretty color. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that on the tip and then we're gonna be ombreing the pink color. I'm just starting off at the tip, working my way up to the cuticle area. Whenever I get basically to where the tip meets the natural nail, I like to kind of blend out that color so that I can transition the other color that I'm ombreing with. I feel like that has worked best for my ombre application. Now I'm taking Fiesta Sista from Not Polish, super pretty vibrant pink, perfect for ombres and French nails, whichever you prefer, but I'm obsessed with this color as well. So I'm just using that near the cuticle, lightly blending that down, making sure that the ombre is nice and flawless. I prefer to work with my ombre application a lot thinner than thicker. I feel like if I need to fix anything, if I have way too big of a bead, it's gonna create tons of bulkiness and I prefer to apply it thin. That way I can build up if I need any fixing and then I just go ahead and encapsulate with clear. 
Of course, use the process that works best for you. This is just my personal preference. So again, taking spring latte, adding that to the tip, and then we're gonna be ombre the pink once again. Now we are going to be doing a little bit of color blocking for our middle finger. I'm starting off by applying a medium sized bead of acrylic near the cuticle, gently pushing that upwards while holding my finger in a downward position so that the product flows down. I'm basically gonna be squaring off that acrylic to make sure that it is nice and straight. I am only using my brush for this process. I did realize that my heater was causing the product to dry very, very quickly. It did get a little cold here in Florida, so we turned that on and then I had to turn the AC back on because it was setting way too quickly for my liking. Whenever I'm doing color blocking, I like my product to be nice and wet so that it gives me time to mold it out and cut anything that I need to cut without it being dry in two seconds. So unfortunately, I had to kind of fix that a little bit on the sides, which I try to do it as neat as possible. And then we're gonna be adding some glitter on the next portion of the nail. These are some gold little flakes. They are a little bit chunky, but I tried to focus on grabbing the ones that are a little bit more fine so that I can really move them wherever I want them to be moved. So I basically am adding a clear base, putting those flakes on there, and then I'm just moving them to kind of form another straight edge. And then I'll add any wherever I feel like needs a little bit of filling. And I'm taking spring latte again, and we're gonna be doing another little portion of color blocking. So I'm taking a small bead of acrylic, placing that under the glitter, and then I'm going to quickly try to form a straight edge on the bottom by wiping my brush all the way across. And as you can see, it kind of makes it pretty straight for the most part. And then I'll tuck in the sides once again, flatten up the top and square off the bottom until I am content with the design. I know a lot of you guys will use X-Acto knives and that is perfectly fine. I just prefer to use my brush for this type of design. I've gotten really comfortable with using it, so I prefer that method over cutting anything off. Now for the bottom portion of the nail, we are going to be leaving it clear, but I'm gonna be adding some really cute leaves. I'm taking the champagne color leaves with a pink one and we're gonna be placing them on the nail. I like to take my tweezers and kind of bend them a little bit more on the round side so that it fits nice and flush on the tip as tips and nails are a little bit more on the curved side. So I'm just adding a little bit of clear acrylic using that to adhere the leaves on there and then adding a little bit more of that foil flakes kind of around just to accent those leaves a little bit. Now for the ring finger, we're gonna be doing a little bit of pink as our base, kind of just to cover up the natural nail portion. And then I'm ombre very, very lightly the spring latte right underneath that. And the rest of the nail is clear. So I'm just taking a very small bead of acrylic, applying that on the natural nail, blending it downwards. And then another small bead of acrylic using spring latte, blending that very carefully up into the pink. And then we're gonna be using that as our base for the leaves that we're about to apply. Again, make sure you bend them very carefully with some tweezers or your nails. 
so they can fit nice and flush it will make your life so much easier when you go and encapsulate it also helps to put it on wet acrylic so then you kind of press it into the acrylic and they sit nice and flush as well that way so i'm kind of just alternating them on that nail kind of staggering them downwards and then we're also going to be adding some of that gold flakes as well And for the pinky, we're just going to be doing a full cover nail of Spring Latte. I figured it would accent the design very nicely and I really, really like this color. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Starting from the tip, working my way up into the cuticle area. I'm going to be encapsulating these nails per usual like I mentioned earlier I like to use my colored acrylic very thin and then just encapsulate and add thickness with the clear I'm using the not polished clear and for our ombre nails I'm focusing on that middle section that is typically where you need the extra thickness when it comes to long nails and then for the middle finger and ring finger, I am basically covering the entire nail with clear acrylic as I did not add the thickness of acrylic at all whatsoever. So I'm making sure that I'm fully covering those leaves and glitter that I applied as you do not want it to file off. So I'm making sure that I'm adding a really good amount of clear on those two nails. I just basically apply it and really press it into the nail art and make sure that it gets in all those little creases and crevices and then I'll build up the thickness of acrylic with more clear. Now for my right hand, using my non-dominant hand, I felt like I would make my life a lot easier if I kept it simple. I have been dying to do this design, so I figured I would take advantage of this set and go ahead and try it. We are doing glitter cuticles. I am obsessed with this look, so I figured I would give it a go and share it with you guys. I'm basically adding loose glitter. If you have a acrylic glitter mix already, it would definitely make your life a little bit easier. But this is a loose glitter that I am applying on wet clear acrylic. And then we are quickly blending out some Fiesta Sista over top. And I love how it looks. So I decided to go ahead and ombre spring latte with that pink as well on this hand just so that everything flows together. I love mix match nails, but for a while now I have been rocking two different sets on both of my nails so i figured i would try to get them as cohesive as possible without changing it up too much but also giving you guys a different design on this hand 
So I am going ahead and very carefully applying Spring Latte on the tip and then we're gonna be infilling the rest of the nail with that pink color. Now again, I'm taking some clear acrylic, adding it very carefully to that cuticle area. And I'm doing this very quickly because I still want it to be wet whenever I go in with my loose glitter. So I'm going directly in with that loose glitter, firmly pressing it into that wet clear acrylic. And then we can go ahead and finish off the rest of the nail. Now for the rest of the nails, I did realize that it'd probably be easier if I just go ahead and do my ombre application and work my way up. So we're using Spring Latte at the tip, very carefully applying that. And I try to add the thickness of the nail that I want with this first bead. Sometimes I may have to add a little bit more on that tip, but I try to get it as thick as I want it. So I'm applying that and then quickly working my way up towards the cuticle area. At this point, I am blending out that color, making it really thin so that when I go in with the pink, I can seamlessly blend that together without having the nail super bulky. So again, very quickly, just blending out that Fiesta Sista. And then once I get up to the cuticle area, I am making it extremely thin so that you can still see parts of the glitter kind of showing through. Of course, it mattifies it a little bit, but I love the look of it. So I'm just kind of blending it out even more as best as I can. And that's basically how I get that look and it looks so pretty in my opinion. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the middle finger and the pinky as well. It's too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I lay my head in it And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be I guess it's for the best you know the worst Selfish for that I let you fall again I let you know that
Now I did go ahead and encapsulate that hand off camera so you won't be seeing that footage. But just quickly going into my filing process, I let everything dry very nicely. Now we're using my e-file at a speed of about 9 to 10,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using the rose gold medium grit bit from Kiara Sky. And I'm just starting off at the cuticle area, blending that product nicely into my natural nail. And then very quickly going over the surface of the nail, trying to smooth out any imperfections. Again, very quickly around that cuticle area, nice and flush to the natural nail will help prevent lifting. So I try to get that as flush as possible and then just smoothing out that surface. Now I'm sure everybody already noticed, but my thumbs, I did not trim them and you guys should be very proud of me. For all of you that have questioned my short thumbs, here it is. This one's for you. <laughs> but I figured I went ahead and purchased a car seat key, which honestly has made my life so much easier. So I was like, you know what? I have no excuse now. I can make my thumbs longer. So here we are. I feel a little bit weird because I'm not used to this but I love that all my nails are the same length so now I'm taking my hand file from Tammy Taylor this is a peel and stick file I am going ahead and filing the sides and then quickly shaping out those nails I do like to go back in on the surface of the nail just to make sure everything is super smooth so I'll start off at the sides work my way on the surface and then I square off the tip Now I'm taking my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and quickly buffing the surface of the nail. This is going to help just smooth everything out. I definitely don't have to do this whenever I'm doing nail art. I just went ahead and did it anyways. And I did go ahead and file my other hand off camera. I struggle a lot, you guys, to record with my non-dominant hand. And unfortunately, a lot of the footage was really out of focus so i just went ahead and cut it out if you are interested in seeing all that process i do have tons of other videos working with my non-dominant hand so you guys are more than welcome to check those videos out destiny has my name no it's coming it'll never go i know that we are gonna be all right we gonna make it through if it takes us all night no matter what now taking the Kiara Sky Lint Free Wipes and some Young Nail Swipe. Quickly cleaning the surface of the nail. You can obviously wash your hands instead of this process. I just prefer to do that so I'm not getting up and wandering off. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. Now I decided to be a little daring and do some intricate nail art with my non-dominant hand. So I do want to let you guys know that I almost called it quits a few times during the process, but I pushed through for the purpose of this video. 
I'm quickly taking the dark brown color from the gel art liners from Profiles Backstage, their fall collection. I'm not quite sure the specific names, but I'm taking the dark brown and the lightest cream color. Mixing the two, try to get as close as possible to the spring latte color. I failed miserably, but it still went really well as an accent. I'm taking my McCart liner for this design. I'm using the white brush. And I'm starting off, we're gonna be doing a quilted design on this nail. And I kind of break down designs as best as possible to give you guys really good insight on exactly how you can create it yourself. Diamonds, I know, can be a little bit tricky to draw. So an easy way to avoid having to struggle with all the lines is do a cross so i'm just starting off with that as my base and then you're going to connect all the lines together and you get a nice diamond design however i'm doing it with my non-dominant hands so they are a little bit wonky but you guys get the point so i'm going to go ahead and connect all those lines and fill the center of the diamonds and then we're gonna be creating that same design on the entire surface of the nail. Blessings coming my way. Yeah. Mm. It's like I can feel the blessings coming my way. I know that we know I'm gonna be alright. We gon' make it through if it takes us all night. No matter what the odds may bring our way. I can see the blessings coming our way. Now once you have a line down the middle, now you can infill on the sides. And I actually went ahead and tried to do diamonds from scratch on the sides. I went ahead and did that and infilled it as well. And you're basically going in between the ones that you have already drawn. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that on the rest of the nail. Now, once I'm done, I'm taking spring latte, sprinkling it over that wet gel paint, letting it soak in a little bit, going in with multiple coats of this. You just wanna keep doing it over and over again until the entire surface is nice and matte. 
Place that in the light. Once we're out of the light, we're gonna dust off any excess powder. And then I'm actually gonna be putting some crystals in between those quilted inspired little diamonds. So I am taking this crystal applicator from Not Polish and I'm taking a little bit of their jewelry gel and just dabbing that where I'm going to be placing the crystals. Very small amount goes a long ways. This stuff holds on crystals extremely well. So I'm basically just dabbing it on there and then we're going to be placing the crystals individually on top of those little dots of jewelry gel. taking the other side of that crystal applicator I'm just picking up those crystals and gently pressing them down into that gel and then we're going to be curing that in the light for a full minute to ensure that everything stays put Now we're adding some crystals on the pinky of the opposite hand as well. And I'm just placing a bigger bead right in the middle and then down the sides I'm using the tiny crystals just to kind of complement the set and tie everything together. Again, placing that in the light for a minute to ensure everything is nice and put. Now we're going in with our top coat. This is Matted from Not Polish. I'm applying that on the thumb, index finger, partially on the middle finger, and on the pinky. And then we're gonna be going in with Gloss It from Not Polish and applying that on the ring finger and partially on the middle finger. Of course, place that in the light for a full minute. I like to do two minutes just to make sure everything is nice and dry. For the opposite hand, I did go ahead and apply Shiny Top Coat on all four fingers other than the one with our nail art. Once both hands are nice and dry and out of the light, I'm taking my favorite cuticle oil from Profiles Backstage, lathering that all over my cuticles and inhaling it very deeply because I love the smell. I'm just taking my other hand and gently buffing that into my skin and it melts right in without leaving any oily cast, which is crucial when it comes to pictures and videos. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton. And I'll see you guys next time.